guess, maybe, um, my wife began to express to me that she was having trouble with my mother. Hmm. It was relatively minor kind of thing to me. I, the, the issue was a relatively minor one, but eventually it became apparent that I would need to deal with it. And so uh, it had to do with how holidays worked. Uh, our, our families live about 35 miles apart, so you know Thanksgiving and Christmas, we could see both families. But my, we would decide how we would do the holiday, holiday. And like on Christmas, both of the grandmas wanted the children there in the morning, that type of thing. <clears throat> so we just did whatever we did. And it began to disturb my mother to the extent that she began not to talk to me, but to talk to my wife mm -hmm. about it and to fuss and complain her and it, it my wife is you know a gentle person she didn't want that kind of stress and so finally the way we resolved this was I sat down with my mother and I said okay here's the deal it's this simple for this cause mm -hmm. this woman I left you and my dad she's more important to me than you are she always will be more important to me than you are and the decisions that we make about holidays that she and I negotiate are none of your business. We will do them the way we choose to do them. You'll get an equal opportunity with the children if that's appropriate, but it's not given to you to tell my wife how to do a thing. Ended that, that difficulty in that relationship, and they pretty much had a good relationship ever since. There was a young man I was counseling a few years back and it became apparent in our discussions, and, and I really pointed it out to him as well, that he permitted his mother to give his young wife a pretty hard time. I mean, miserable in some cases. Hmm. And I said, and I used that experience that I was just sharing with you, and I said, now, here's something you're going to eventually probably have to do, given your mother's personality. You're going to have to tell your mother that she can't pick on your wife. <laughs> she, she wasn't even there, and he was visibly shaking by the time I got through saying that. He said, oh, no, I'm not going to tell my mother anything like that. So now that marriage will always be rocked off and on from time to time by his inability to understand that the bride that he took is under his protection. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a significant feature of this whole thing. It is largely a matter of protection. Who's protecting whom? Well, let's don't have confusion about that. I protect you, mm. husband to wife. Right. We don't need confusion in that matter because if you don't know who the protector is. Well, I took another cowardly road out. I will never forget my, um, uh, my wife's mom would interfere in certain situations that I didn't like her interfering in. So what I did, because we only lived like three or four miles apart, if I moved 40 miles, <laughs> and I felt like, you know, creating that barrier was going to, you know, somehow, you know, stop this controlling thing. I called it control. Yeah, it was. You know, yeah. uh, and it's, it's a tendency in each woman to, to basically want to take control, especially when you have a passive man. Mm -hmm. When you have especially. a man who basically, who is afraid mm -hmm. to make decisions, a mm -hmm. man who's afraid to consult the Lord and to talk to his wife concerning very important decisions, usually it's innate in a woman to want to take charge. She's threatened if he doesn't. Exactly. You know, if there, if there are things going on that threaten him, they threaten her. Mm. A passive husband is, no, is of no value in a world where bad things happen <laughs> because that leaves the woman exposed and she fundamentally needs for him to protect her. Right. Now, and again, you know, I'm, I'm treading on ground where there's sexual politics involved, but that is the way the thing works. I can't imagine constructing a scenario in which Christ, the, the church runs around trying to protect Jesus. That's a silliness. But if this is what we say it is, which is a representation of Christ and his church, he's the one who took the responsibility. He purchased his bride with his own blood. Mm. That's, per, that's, a, that's taking responsibility all the way. You can't take it further. Right. He took it to the limit. And I have that responsibility. And you have that responsibility. That's right. Every married man has that responsibility, and every married woman has the right to expect that. 
And in the body of Christ, a woman who is not married has the right to expect it from her nearest kinsman, that is, spiritual father and other responsible males in the context of the body of Christ. No woman should be left alone and exposed. Hmm. Yeah. And, and the thing that um, helps with the, the human factor, you know, in terms of not always hearing correctly, is that if your husband has a spiritual father, then you have a right of appeal. In other yeah. words, if, if you really want to see it his way, but you ju there's just something inside of you that can't, mm -hmm. you know, you can say, well, look, can we go talk to, you know, Paul about this? You know, and, 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 that, and that, again, is, is a blessing and a protection and a covering because, you know, he's going to see it with different eyes probably, you know, being once removed from whatever the argument is, you know, and, and that's a great protection. Um, you know, I have... Um, a, n a number of, of couples that, you know, I'm the, I'm the spiritual father for, you know, the, woman, the women have used their right of appeal, you know, and, uh, and if anything, you know, I, I probably shouldn't lean, I should, should, I tend to lean towards the wife's side a little bit, you know, I, I want to make sure that they're being cared for. That's you know? good. Yeah, and there's an additional protection in that is, um, in, in our own case, our spiritual father, would do uh, pretty much this, as, as Joe has suggested, lean in her direction at least initially, mm -hmm. until we get pretty far into the investigation, um, and, and he's able to make a better determination. But one of the things I find is that, in I have learned to desire that it not go that far. Mm -hmm. If it looks like it's going that far, then I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. And we really need to get the assessment straightened out. I need to get my head right about what the problem is. Just the, 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 the fact, the idea that this might result in appeal means that I might have failed to properly handle and or appreciate the situation. And I need to work on that. Um, and part of the reason for that, so, so you'll know, is that my spiritual father is of such character that he and my wife Sometimes there'd been he would stay at at our house, and we, the three of us would stay up late and talk, and and pretty soon there would be two of them talking about me, <laughs> as though I were a piece of furniture. <laughs> the relationship is such that they can do that. That's right, my point. Right, right. It, it it I make that because he has established rapport that's sufficient and adequate that that he really has the ability to communicate with my wife. As a father, even though I am her spiritual father, he has, the, he has a way of communicating with her as a father because he is my spiritual father that is capable of getting us on past disagreements and things. We're going to get there. Right. And that's a beautiful thing because in the world, so many women are there. There's no one to appeal to. There's you know, no and that's really important because we hear today of various women who are right now in ministry who says that this particular ministry covers me. You know, and they'll name some prominent ministry that they're covering. You know, whereas here you're talking about a husband, a spiritual father, you know, a person whereby you know, that's tangible, that you can talk right. to, that, that's personal. Right. You know. Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. There's a real relationship there. Mm -hmm. There's a real relationship there, you know, and that, that's a key factor I think that we must understand. When we talk about covering, we're not talking about this web whereby these different ministries no. and interwoven of ministries covering you. Why don't you present what is the difference between a husband or, or a spiritual father covering versus, let's say, for instance, a well-known ministry? No, uh, you, a well-known ministry covering you is sort of like having a diploma that says something. What's that got to do with your current pain? <laughs> the current pain is what matters. Mm -hmm. the, the dispute, the matter uh, that the husband and wife or the woman, single woman, single man for that matter, has to work their way through. Mm -hmm. um, life presents all kinds of vicissitudes. They come. They just, they do. They're there. The, we have an enemy and he's powerful. And in fact, at this time, he's the God of this age. And he's exercising much power and much influence. We have a right to not be controlled and dominated by that influence. It's also true that in the process of developing us in such a way that, that uh, the man represents Christ and the woman represents the church, we also find 
that there's the necessity of understanding that a woman who doesn't have proper covering is subject to being destroyed. Mm. She's, in other words, not on the property using the Old Testament kind of model. When she's got that covering, then it becomes the responsibility of that covering. And that takes a human being who's willing to be involved in the life of the one being covered. You can't do that with certificates and things of that sort. They're not going to get it done. The enemy's not that interested in certificates. But when he comes up against the presence of the Holy Spirit, it's a little different situation. That's key. You shaking your head there, Joe. No, I'm just agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else you want to add to that? Oh, no, no, it, 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 somewhat you get a little bit of the sense of the model of it with Christ in us, you know, um, from Job. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it, you know, people sometimes believe the enemy is just free to do whatever the heck he wants, whenever the heck he wants. But it's clearly presented, you know, in that, in that book. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, well, you can go this far, but don't go any farther. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and you know what? He don't go any farther. That's mm -hmm. right. You know? He has boundaries. Right, and that's right. what a husband does in terms of... of for the wife, he's fulfill. He's presenting that picture, you know. In other words, you know, I, I can be a protection for you, not because I, I really can, but because God has given me that position in your life. Right. You know, what is it about women and angels anyway? Why does the Apostle Paul have a need to take us back to the account, I believe, of Genesis, mm -hmm. where Eve is confronted by an angel? You know, mm -hmm. what is it about women and angels? One suspects that it has to do with the fact that women are just naturally more sensitive to supernatural things. Mm -hmm. They just, the, the makeup of a woman yes. is automatically more sensitive to those things that are going on that are supernatural that you and I don't see. That They don't see what they can sense. They're less likely uh, to miss those kinds of things than uh, hard-headed old guys are, I suppose. And uh, the result is that... Uh, uh, they have to be protected because they can they can make mistakes very mm -hmm. easily mm -hmm. because they're in that realm and we get to be hard headed and try to keep the mistakes from happening or get them corrected. Right. And so not only does Satan have limits, but so do I. You can't come past this because here is mine and here's where she dwells. That's good. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for discussing this topic with me. I'm sure there's a a lot more we can cover, oh but an hour doesn't afford us to cover how broad this topic is. But I think that, uh, if anything, I think that if any woman is watching the program, as well as men, they have an understanding and a sense of uh, why God loves us so much. He wanted to make sure that we are very well protected, and he's set up an uh, uh, authoritative structure whereby we can be protected. So once again, thank you, Corbett for coming from all pleasure. the way from Texas to be a part of the Apostolic Forum. And Joe, thank you from coming for all good old Baltimore to be a part of the Apostolic Forum. I'm Dana Thompson. Thank you for watching today. Uh, hopefully you tune in to future broadcasts.